السلام علیکم میں ہنا اعجاز ویلکم ٹو ویک اینڈ ود ہنا ایکسٹرا اسپیشل ویک اینڈ بننے جا رہا ہے ایک تو کنگز ڈے ہے اور کنگز ڈے کس ملک کی میں بات کروں کہاں پہ کنگز ڈے ہے یہ آپ تھوڑی دیر میں جان پائیں گے بٹ بفور دیٹ جس ملک کی ایک بہت ہی اہم شخصیت سے ایک ڈپلومیٹ سے بلکہ جن سے میں بات کروں گی آج وہ ملک ادھر اگر آپ کا کبھی اتفاق ہوا ہے جانے کا تو آپ خوبصورت ترین آرکیٹیکچر دیکھ سکتے ہیں ہسٹری اس کی بلڈنگس میں نظر آتی ہے اس کی سڑکوں پہ نظر آتی ہے اس کے آپ کہہ لیجیے آپ کے چاروں گرد ہسٹری کی ریفلیکشن ہر ایک چیز میں نظر آئے گی اس ملک کی چاکلیٹ بڑی خاص مشہور ہے ادھر کا کھانا پینا بھی اس کے بھی بہت چرچے ہیں دنیا بھر میں اور اگر ہم بات کریں ہیومن ڈیولپمنٹ انڈیکس پہ تو کافی ہائی رینک پہ آپ کو یہ ملک نظر آئے گا کیونکہ ان کا تعلیمی شعبہ ان کا صحت کا شعبہ ان تمام چیزوں میں جو کانٹریبیوٹ کرتے ہیں ہیومن ڈیولپمنٹ انڈیکس میں بہت ہی اچھی کہہ لیجیے کہ ان کی رینکنگ ہے پرفارمنس ہے امید کرتے ہیں کہ آج جن سے آپ ملنے جا رہے ہیں اس ویک اینڈ پہ آپ بھی اسے ایک ایکسٹرا اسپیشل ویک اینڈ ہی کہیں گے خاص کر اس لیے کیونکہ آج کنگز ڈے بھی ہے ان کے ملک میں اس ملک کے ایک شہر میں نیٹو کے ہیڈ کوارٹرز میں آئی ایم شیور ناؤ یو گیسٹ اٹ آئی ایم ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ بیلجیم اور میرے ساتھ موجود ہیں ہز ایکسلینسی مسٹر وہیڈن ہو از امبیسڈر ٹو پاکستان فرام بیلجیم ہیلو ہاؤ آر یو گڈ مارننگ ایم ویری ویل ہاؤ ووڈ یو نارملی اسٹارٹ یور مارننگس ان بیلجیم ایف یو بیک دا ویل بیک ان دا ڈے آئی واز ورکنگ ان برسلس اینڈ لیونگ ان دا کنٹری سائڈ سو آئی ووڈ ویک اپ ویری ارلی گریب بریک فاسٹ ہاپ آن دا کار اینڈ دین ڈرائیو ٹو دا اسٹیشن گیٹ ان دا ٹرین آئی سیریس یو ور ریزڈ آن دا کنٹری سائڈ یا ویل آئی واز بورن ان شارلوہا اٹس اے سٹی لوکیٹڈ اباؤٹ سکسٹی کلو میٹرس آف ساؤتھ آف برسلس And later on, I bought a house in that same area. When was it when you came to the city? Well, I came to work, so it wasn't really a big shock or anything, simply a constraint because you have to plan your day uh, carefully and uh, you have also to manage your time and energy levels since uh, you, you start early and finish very late. Uh, but uh, I plan to, uh, to live in uh, the center of Brussels when I am uh, reassigned to Belgium next time. So I think that will be some improvement for us. I have uh, tasted Belgian chocolate and of course I've been to Brussels. And I tell you, I was uh, mesmerized by the architecture, by the food, um, the culture, history, all what I saw, from all what I saw. I gather you miss a lot of that, do you? Sometimes. Uh, but then again, the life of a diplomat is made of that. Uh, every three, four years, I've been reassigned. I've discovered many countries, which I feel is a, is a tremendous privilege. I've been assigned to places very diverse, including Thailand, Kuwait, Morocco, Switzerland, Japan, Brussels, of course, and now Islamabad. You've been in Pakistan for four years now. That's quite a period. <laughs> It is my fourth year, indeed, and I will be reassigned. Uh, I'm not sure where as of yet, uh, at um, the, the end of next summer. Coming on the economic side, from what I've seen, the figures state that Belgium is Pakistan's one of top trading partners for some time now, in fact. Indeed. One thing which is important to understand about my country is that our economy is almost exclusively export-oriented. Hmm. So the uh, export to GDP ratio uh, is 85%. Four out of five workers depend directly on export for a living. And therefore, uh, there is a huge appetite from our companies to find new promising markets. And in that regard, Pakistan is a, bit, a little bit of an uncharted territory with uh, tremendous opportunities and also some uh, risk assessments which needs to be made. Um, I conducted a couple of economic missions during my tenure here. The last one just ended last week. We went to Karachi and Lahore. And we I was just going to mention about that actually. Oh, excellent. It, uh, I must tell the audience that it was a great success. You had a large number of uh, business people Uh, for, from Belgium, mm. from various sectors, visiting these two cities. And I saw a lot of potential 
which sectors do you think Pakistan could most benefit from if it was to further trade with uh, Belgium? The short answer is pretty much all of them. You know, I had meetings with uh, the chief ministers and the governors and when I heard them listing the challenges and the uh, needs of their respective, uh, respective provinces and cities, I really had the impression that we have ways and means to assist uh, in, in almost every respect. Um, water management, sanitation, um, education, uh, health, uh, engineering, industry, um, agriculture of course, and food processing, business solutions in general, the list is very long. Now, if you ask me what the specific uh, areas uh, of uh, expertise for our companies here are at the moment, I'd say that they are geared to the specifics of the Pakistani economy. Namely, it's a growing economy, which means that we export a lot of chemicals and machinery, uh, which are needed for the expansion of the local industry. And since it's a country with a fast-growing population, we also have a lot of activity regarding uh, these specific segments of, of the market. Baby food, baby products like diapers, for example, and of course, pharmaceuticals and vaccines. I'm sure now that you've been here for four years, you've seen the new government uh, take its position, setting new policies, setting new strategies. With the new government in place, how do you think Pakistan's and Belgium's relations are going to improve further? first uh, observation I'd make is that the, the situation which the current government has inherited is in some ways quite similar to the one in 2013 when the previous government came, came into power. And so the first three months or so have been uh, characterized by, by a lot of um, firefighting, emergency funding uh, and uh, short-term measures. Uh, at the same time, there have been indications about uh, a willingness to pursue some uh, deep-rooted reforms, which I think are necessary but will require a lot of commitment. And any government uh, has to be very wise about how to spend its political capital. Because in a democracy, populations can be fickle and measures, when they are radical and uh, ambitious, are always painful at some point. Your Excellency, I think I'm going to take a break. All right. Well, you've been to Karachi, as you just mentioned a little while ago, and of course you've been to Lahore. Now, these two cities are two business hubs, Karachi of course taking the lead. The way uh, businessmen operate in different provinces of Pakistan, I'm sure you must have seen a difference. Have you kind of observed some difference? Well, uh, out of the four provinces of Pakistan, my experience is in, in indeed limited to, uh, to Karachi and, uh, and, and Lahore. Yeah. Yes. Uh, although uh, I did not just travel to Lahore but also to Sialkot and Faisalabad which are oh, you have. other important industrial hubs. Um, I, didn't say, uh, I couldn't say I observed deep-rooted cultural differences in the way of doing business. Obviously Karachi is more to the south so in any country uh, the mentality is slightly different. Okay, I'd like to know how was it different? <laughs> well, uh, maybe more, more passionate um, and um, the, the, the general mindset is uh, a bit more meridional uh, as it would be. You're saying you saw more ambition there? Not necessarily, but the, the main difference I think was in the business environment itself. 
as you mentioned, Karachi is the main trade hub. The Large port is port. there. Yes, indeed. Uh, it is the business hub, indeed. Yeah. And so, in terms of revenue collection and uh, customs uh, activity, it is the center. On the other hand, uh, Lahore, as I mentioned, is uh, very uh, important in terms of industrial uh, output. And in fact, just not Lahore, um, other cities um, surrounding Lahore, whether it be Sialkot, Faisalabad, Gujrawala, Gujarat. True. Mm. Uh, in fact, Sialkot has um, certain producers of surgical instruments. We uh, they produce uh, some of the best uh, sports goods as well. Indeed, it's a match made in heaven because they have the sports good and we have the football team. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So how much are you missing your country nowadays? My situation is a little bit special because my wife is from Thailand and therefore we, we have uh, to spend our days uh, in, in both countries, which makes it a bit difficult sometimes. Well, how nice. You get to ta spend so much time in Thailand. I love the I And love we the all place. pray for that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, um, I will be meeting her in a little while, I believe. Yes, indeed. Yeah. The trade delegations which have been visiting Pakistan, mm. in fact, the ones that you've organized in the recent past, if I was to mention, mm. what impressions of Pakistan did they take back? I think they were pleasantly surprised in a number of ways. Uh, not least the uh, interest from the local business circles, also uh, the, the potential for uh, export even in the short term. And uh, I think that in terms of image, uh, most of them discovered uh, a couple of cities which are not uh, quite what is portrayed in the international media at times. Uh, I think uh, problems cannot be understated, they are there, but at the same time, like in any other country, Pakistan is a place where the vast majority of people just want to lead good lives, better lives for themselves and their children. Well, and for that matter, for that change, mm. they decided to go and vote for a different party this time, which promised them change, and let's hope we get that change. Mm that we're forcing. So you said they took back some positive impressions from the business community here, is that right? So, uh, and they would be interested in investing in Pakistan? Would that be correct too? One thing which is important to understand is that the economic structure of my country consists almost exclusively in small and medium-sized enterprises. Therefore, we have very few groups with the muscle to invest long term in an emerging market and hope to break even after five or ten years. They have to go for niche products, very specific uh, investment, time limited. Most of the time we have a lot of very uh, creative startups for example. And the current environment may not be quite ripe for them yet. Having said that, I believe that with the first wave of projects well underway under CPEC, opportunities will arise for our companies in the short to medium term. Um, but exactly in which sector, that remains to be seen. Do you think that's still a question where you think there's a lot of potential? Um, no, many of them uh, show potential. To name a few? I think energy is a major challenge. and. I was reading, for example, that uh, Pakistan is uh, preparing to launch some new coal plants, which I think will help addressing the uh, energy shortages in the country, and that's very important. Right. On the other hand, uh, I think similar efforts need to be made in the efficiency of the distribution system of the electricity in particular, to avoid uh, loss and uh, thefts and um, similar inefficiencies. You think there's potential there? There is. Also, um, when you consider uh, renewable energy sources, Pakistan has a huge supply of sun. And a lot we of see, yes, we have lots of solar, yes. Indeed. That's right. It will also be a very interesting avenue to follow, I think. Um, and we, we do have uh, a lot of expertise in those areas. Of course, His Excellency Mr. Verhaden ki Begum ki baat ho rahi hai. Unke ghar pe, unke residence pe. In fact, main maujood hoon. 
काफ़ी खूबसूरत रेजिडेंस है थोड़ा आपको अंदर से भी दिखाएंगे और इनकी ज़िंदगी किस तरह से गुजरती है उस पर भी मज़ीद रोशनी डालेंगे एंड लेट्स नॉट फर्गेट आज किंग्स डे है उस रिसेप्शन पे भी हमने जाना है सो लॉट टू डू वक्त कम है सो लेट स्टार्ट नाउ हाय मुक्जा हाउ आर यू हाय हाय ना गुड हाउ आर यू वेरी वेल वेल मुक्जा आई मस्ट कॉम्प्लीमेंट यू यू हैव अ लवली लवली हाउस थैंक यू वेरी मच सो यू डिड इट ऑल अप योर सेल्फ अम विद द हेल्प ऑफ द एम्प्लॉइज हियर राइट एंड हाउ वाज इट हाउ डिफिकल्ट वाज इट वाज देयर अ लैंग्वेज बैरियर नो बिकॉज थ्री ऑफ देम आर गुड इन इंग्लिश really yes we are lucky but how long has it been since you guys got married um we just got married uh, last month 17 years last month 17 years you've been married for 17 yes. years i'd like to ask you how has your journey been <laughs> well, so far so good <laughs> so far so good and mukta what about you would you say the same yes so far so good yes. so i'm sure this journey journey has involved uh you Going with him around the globe. Yes. Now, where all have you been? We have been at first after we got married to Belgium, of course, and yeah. then to uh, Kuwait and Morocco and to Geneva, Tokyo, uh, Belgium, and yeah, Pakistan. So you've been pretty much around everywhere, every region. Yes. Which place did you enjoy the most? Hmm, Geneva. Geneva. Yes. Well, would you say the same as Geneva your favorite or has it been your favorite? Place? The environment uh, in Switzerland is wonderful. The quality of life is superb. Yes. Work-wise, I've had more challenging uh, assignments. This one is definitely one of them. But I also enjoyed uh, Japan very much. Japan. Mm. Would you say that Mukta? Mm, for me it's different because I like small cities. Like Islamabad is a good city for me. small size it's green small green and green yes right it's so a move them um i was told you're from thailand yes i think one of the most visited places by pakistanis and tourists if you look at the number of tourists that visit thailand that's the highest in the world i believe yes your culture is rich if you look at the variety if you look at the taste and i think it's very similar to pakistan yes. so you have the same opinion yes i have the same opinions there are many vegetables in thailand which is uh, we can find here like uh, loki uh, tori and some other things i don't remember the name in so urdu so you know that in urdu ne kafi urdu bhi aati hai main pareshan ho rahi hu sunke well um dutch french and german these are the three official languages spoken in Correct. belgium yes Uh, well, for that matter, I must say your English is very good. It's very clear. It is so, part of the requirements. <laughs> well, you said you were raised on the countryside, right? That's so, correct. And we were talking about work, how you moved to the city. True. So, being a diplomat, becoming a diplomat, how did that happen? Well, uh, I guess it was on the cards. I studied political political science and did a couple of masters in European studies as well. Uh, since Brussels is the second largest diplomatic center in the world it only made sense but i had to bid my time because we have a small diplomatic service and they don't have exams every year but uh, do you think you were destined to become one or you worked your way hard and up well uh, partly so i'd say um, the way i built up my curriculum was also to to get not just uh, proficiency in these key areas of uh, political science and uh, european uh, law etc but also to get the proficiency in the languages required for the uh, entrance exams right so how fluent are you with french and german well uh, french is my mother language so i think i'm doing okay there my dutch is the, the second language uh, taught at school from the age of uh, 11 uh, and german uh, well it is spoken by 70000 people in belgium it's a, it's a small uh, community uh so we don't really have exams in german uh on the other hand english is pretty comprehensive well there is a sizable amount of pakistanis living in belgium did you ever have any interaction with them during your days in belgium well mostly via the embassy uh we have about 20000 pakistanis uh, which which is sizable but very small compared to other communities like uh, especially in the uk but also in germany for example right yeah. right
part of growing up, did you ever have any interaction from people of this region? Mm -hmm. Of course we did. You did? And what were your impressions? It's a mixed bag. We'd like to, uh, we'd like to get the cat out of the bag then. <laughs> Very well. Well, 200 million people in the country. Yeah. Uh, so most of them are charming. I found that they, they are willing to uh, give a positive image of the country and therefore are very welcoming and hospitable. On the other hand, being a foreign diplomat, especially from a Western country, also makes you a bit of a target in some situations. Really? And that would be like how? Well, visa is one issue and then visibility in general, but also uh, financial support, hmm. alcohol, you name it. Yeah. So, well, Mokda, uh, when you were coming to Pakistan, how did you perceive Pakistan to be in Pakistani people? And when you came here, were they any different from your perception? Mm, yes, before we came here, uh, we only saw on the news that Pakistan is dangerous. You know, That's we, all what we, you heard yes, probably. We saw uh, bombs here and there. But when we arrived here, at first I was still felt not security. But after two years, I, then you felt yes, safe. I felt safe. The kind of work, the important work that you have carved out for yourself here, IFA. Yes. And Islamabad, if you could tell us something yes. about that. IFA is Islamabad uh, Foreign Women's Association. So we are a welfare NGO. Uh, once a month, we organize a coffee morning to collect uh, the money to help uh, some schools or some hospitals. Right. Have you made any Pakistani friends here? Yes, yes. You yes, have? Yes. And how much Urdu do you know other than Tori and all the food <laughs> items? <laughs> Not many. Not much. Like but it's uh, easy to communicate yes, in English, like to, I believe. Aslam alaikum, walaikum <laughs> salam. And um, bus. <laughs> bus. Bus. Stop. I think that's... Tick? Tick. Well, Anna. Tori, Tori. No. Tori, Tori. She knows Tori, Tori Urdu. Do you know some Urdu? Some Tori, Tori Urdu. Well, I'm afraid I'm at a disadvantage because for most of my official uh, dealings, I have local staff who actually do everything for me. Oh God, you've got people to do your stuff, so you're not getting to learn any yeah. Urdu. Yet. I'm afraid not. <laughs> of course, Shukriya is very important. Well, I think she's done a great job. She's learned some food items, names in Urdu. Mm -hmm some uh, basic Urdu, what she needs to communicate. So Mogda, congratulations on that. Thank You've you. been certified as an officially Urdu speaking person. <laughs> well, so could you introduce me to some of vegetable plantations yes. as well? Okay, so Mogda, what's happening here? What are you up to? Oh, we are growing many things. We have uh, mint, we have uh, citronen. In French is citronen, lemon grass. <laughs> lemon grass, obviously. <laughs> yes, in summer we have more. In summer? Yes. Yeah. So are you too. interested in vegetable plantation also or is it just mokta? Well, mostly eating them. <laughs> just eating them? Yes. And, and what does he like to eat mostly? Mm, any country. He eats uh, two, three, three times Pakistani's food. So he eats really? more Pakistani's food than I do. Which is your favorite Pakistani, uh, let's say? Item, food uh, item. Meatballs and curry, yes. I think. Yeah. Meatballs Meatball and curry. curry. But not spicy. Not well, spicy. And Mugda for you? For me? Pakistani favorite. Yes, I like uh, halim, but with chicken. Halim. 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 Well, I'm with you. I love halim too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah. with chicken, not with meat. With chicken. Yes. With chicken, so you are you are enjoying Pakistani food, yes, I believe. Yes, of course. And you cooking uh, Thai, I believe. I was yes, just being told. Yes, I, I cook Thai. And what's the best you can make in Thai? Hmm, green curry. Chili? Oh, I see some chilies. Yes. Yum. In in summer they are really beautiful, but this is uh, winter, so it's. But these are Thai chilies. Yes. Thai chili. I brought the seeds from Thailand. Well, you could officially start a restaurant here. <laughs> a residence is a bit of a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. This is what I like about Pakistan, yeah. that I can grow also my vegetables. Mm, so that's one thing you like about Pakistan. But how well blended have you become with the Pakistani culture? Well, you know, work is very intensive here. And the community, as was said before, in Islamabad is fairly small. 
I travel maybe three, four times outside of Islamabad for work every year, which means that opportunities are limited. Islamabad is a very specific environment. What do you think are the best parts of Pakistani culture? Uh, I think handmade products. You, the arts and craft. Yeah, the arts and craft, like uh, handicraft. handicraft or table craft or ma many things. Salt lamb, I love it. The salt lamb. Yes. yes. yes so so yes. many nice things. There would be certain things I'm sure you have in your mind that you believe if the Pakistani society had or possessed, it would have been a bet better society. Although there is a lot of good things going on here, well-meaning people, uh, charitable initiatives, and all that. I think the cohesiveness of the society in general uh, and the sense of common good could be higher. Well, Mogda, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And Excellency. Very nice having you Thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you for the time you gave us uh, back there and here now. आज जो हम लोग यहाँ पे इकट्ठे हुए हैं ये आज बेल्जियम का एक बड़ा ख़ास दिन है ये उनका किंग्स डे है जो कि वो हमेशा 1866 से लेके अभी तक इसको सेलिब्रेट करते आ रहे हैं वी प्रिफर हैविंग द द 15 ऑफ नवंबर और किंग्स डे किंग्स डे इज रियली इम्पोर्टेंट टू बेल्जियम फॉर आर डेनेस्टी for our kings, also for the army and for all the government. Mm -hmm.